When President Marcos had flown to Japan on one of his official overseas trips, he came back with a very big announcement. Both the Japanese government and its private sector had signed, pledged, and committed to investing in the Philippines, ranging from billions of dollars to business initiatives that are stated to produce thousands of jobs for Filipinos. The exact stated amount has varied across different announcements since the Marcos administration published many agreements. The exact pledge committed so far, as we are concerned, is estimated to be about 13 billion US dollars. Moreover, Marcos in an interview at Vilmore Air Base has also stated that these will create up to 24,000 jobs, not even limited to investment commitments. The two countries have also talked about boosting military ties with a possible tripart pact with the United States. But anyway, let us dive into the biggest topic about the Marcos trip, which is investments, and then talk about the other agreements signed throughout the visit. Out of the $13 billion investment announced, there's also a $3 billion loan for the competition of infrastructure development across the country, more specifically targeted towards railway projects. These include the North-South Commuter Railway for the Malolos Turban along with the project extension of the commuter railway. These also include the Metro Manila subway. The trip has also been reported to incur about $600 million worth of investment pledges from private Japanese investors. Businessmen from the Philippines, such as Manuel Pin Gilligan, had met with the Japanese counterparts from the likes of Mitsushi & Co, which they stated will be investments for infrastructures. Other business agreements were also signed, including manufacturing projects from Brother Industries and Atsi Corporation, whereas a factory expansion project was also signed with Japan Tobacco, and even an automobile expansion project and commitment to renewal to meet production targets with Mitsubishi Motors Corporation. One of the key highlights that can be taken away from this trip would probably be the semiconductor investments. It's reported that after Marcos met with top businessmen from semiconductor and electronics firms such as Sumitomo Electric Industries, Seiko Epson Corporation, Japan Aviation Electronics Industry, and so on, he went on to announce that these electronic companies would pledge electronic and semiconductor investments that would yield 10,000 jobs. President Marcos was seen saying that he hopes these Japanese investors would recruit talented Filipinos for their research and development activities. Government officials had also met with executives from Japan Energy for a new era, which met with President Marcos on his second day. The two had talked about the energy industry of the Philippines and that JERA had been actively working with the Filipino conglomerate at Boites Group to pursue growth strategies. Moreover, JIRA executives had also stated that they will continue to contribute LNG supply to the Philippines, which they stated at a figure of about 30 millions of tons of LNG per year. The Japan trip could also be seen as one of the largest overseas official trips made by the Marcos administration. The team was joined by several government officials from senators to the House of Representatives, along with his economic team and several delegations. Finally, one big highlight in all of these is that the two countries also had hinted at increasing military partnership. The two government leaders had talked about the rising tensions felt around the South China Sea, which had led to potential visiting forces agreement with Japan. But the possibility still lies on balance as the president fears that it may increase tensions. The border deal can also include the disaster relief deal, which would make it easier to establish a broader legal framework, allowing Japanese forces to deploy to the Philippines. This was stated to also help forge stronger defense and security cooperation when needed. But it's also an agreement that would enable Japanese troops to respond in case a national disaster hits the Philippines, and also a joint training exercise. As soon as President Marcos ended his five-day visit, the deal signed industries that include agriculture, infrastructure development, information and communications technology, and human assistance. He also went on to thank overseas Filipino workers who lived in the country. He said that the Philippines had incurred a better global reputation because of these overseas Filipinos, who are a huge in numbers in countries such as Japan. Let's also not forget that President Marcos had been given a royal audience with the Japanese Emperor and Empress, which to most people's surprise, President Marcos had also invited the Japanese royal family to visit the Philippines, a visit that had not happened since 2016, which at the time was also earmarked as a historic visit. But anyway, as President Marcos ends yet another of his official trips, many people are still wondering, is this just yet another so-called pledge? Many have criticized how Marcos had handled these investments, as pledges can be in the form of uncommitted promises. However, one should still not doubt that Japanese investors have poured billions or even tens of billions of dollars ever since they first started pouring aid into the Philippines. They are, after all, the single largest investor in the country, so it would be no doubt that these pledges would eventually become a reality. But we still leave all of what's to come in the future. Anyway, let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.